Hey folks, Prepper Princess. So it is that time of year again where we talk about how you can save hundreds on electricity. Let us first start with the amazing LED bulbs. That stands for light emitting diode. This is a nine watt bolt with a bulb with a 60 watt equivalent. So this is gonna be extremely bright, but it only uses a fraction of the wattage at a fraction of the price. So I would highly recommend LED bulbs. You can get these anywhere, uh, Home Depot, Amazon.com, Target, Walmart, uh, pretty much anywhere you can think of. Sometimes they sell them at the dollar store, but I wouldn't recommend the ones from the dollar store. I have found that the ones at the dollar store really only last about six months. I guess they're cheaply made. These ones I, Believe it or not, I found these. I found them in a six pack at the thrift store, um, in the thrift store parking lot, not in the thrift store, but I found them and these have lasted me about three years and still going extremely strong. So let's go ahead and go over the other things that you can do to save money. And if you have any tips or tricks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section of this video. Don't forget to check out my website, prepperprincess.com, or you can visit my website on Patreon if you are looking for more personal videos that are related to my personal life. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the programmable thermostat. So yes, you should have a programmable thermostat, but there is something that is even more energy efficient than using a programmable thermostat, and that is by keeping everything turned off, keeping your heat and air conditioning turned off for climate control. Another thing that you can do is use rechargeable batteries and use these as hall lights. So you can see you're not gonna be tripping over anything. Um, I will go ahead and leave the link in the description for these little bad boys, but if you have solar batteries um, or a solar charger and you have solar batteries, you can go ahead and use those pieces of lighting. Another thing that you can do is if you do use your programmable thermostat, take any bedroom doors to bedrooms that you're not using and go ahead and close them off. Make sure that you close off the vents in the rooms that you are not using. Close off the vents so that when you do turn on your heater or air conditioner, you're not heating or cooling a room that you're not using. Next, I highly recommend using a ceiling fan as opposed to using the air conditioner if you are able to. Using your ceiling fans during the day and then at nighttime, open your windows along with the fans. It's really gonna cool down your house. And then during the daytime, close your windows and keep the fans on. Another quick tip for your refrigerator is to keep it at a normal setting or below. The higher the setting, the more your condenser is going to kick on and keep your refrigerator running, even if you don't need to keep your items super, super cold. So that is a quick tip. Leave it at normal temperature or below. So this is nothing special, really. This is just my draperies. But one thing about these draperies is that they are super heavy and they are blackout curtains. Before I got the house insulated, these were my first purchase. And these blackout curtains in the summertime, when you're closed, they keep the heat out. And in the wintertime, they keep the heat in, as long as you keep them closed. If you can only invest in one thing, one thing to increase your energy efficiency, I would recommend blackout curtains. I'm not sure if you all can see this, but this is a water heater. And most people keep their water heaters on the setting of very hot. Um, and there's also other settings there. It's a vacation, low, and hot. In the summertime, you can keep it on low and you're still going to get super hot water. In the wintertime, you can keep it on hot and you're still going to have to turn on the cold tap when you take a shower. If you are going into the shower and you turn your hot water all the way on and then you turn on a little bit of the cold water, that means that your water heater is set at too high of a temperature and you're just wasting electricity. This is a gas water heater, but I've heard from other people, if you have an electric water heater, you can put a timer on it. And with that timer, you can set the timer to turn it on about an hour before you wake up to take your shower. This is, of course, if you're single or maybe a two-person household. Turn it on an hour before you get to take your shower. Your water will be hot. And then after you've taken your shower, the water heater won't kick in again until the next morning. To me, that sounds like a huge energy saver, but I've never been able to try it because I have a gas heater. So another suggestion would be only wash extremely full loads 
Keep it on auto sensing. Don't use the deep wash cycle or extra rinse because that wastes water and electricity. And make sure you keep the water temperature on cold. A lot of people will turn it on hot, thinking that hot is going to get their clothes cleaner, but that's not true. The cleaning mostly comes from the agitation cycle in your washing machine, and it does not have anything to do with the temperature of the water. When it comes to your dryer, I very, very rarely use the dryer because I have a clothesline outside and I allow the sun to do most of my drying. If you don't like your clothes crispy, I get it, okay. So you don't like your clothes crispy, what you can do is you can put it in here on for about 10 or 15 minutes after you've dried them in the sun and it's gonna make them soft just like they were in the dryer. Another option you can do is to take a clean, dry towel and throw it into the dryer before you take your clothes from the washer to the dryer. And it will help soak up some of the moisture and make the dryer time a lot less. So you can use less electricity while using your dryer. Okay, I do wanna qu quickly touch on the subject of energy efficient, I guess you could say appliances. <laughs> I'm not sure if a TV qualifies as an appliance. And I'm not telling you all to go and scrap your current appliances and go buy all new ones. But if you can, when you do end up having to purchase a new TV, dishwasher, stove, oven, refrigerator, go for the energy efficient kind. Even if you're spending an extra 20 to $30 on an energy efficient appliance, it's going to more than make up for the cost of the item over time. So if you can, go for energy efficient. If it's within your budget, the more energy efficient, the better. One thing that I always recommend, which some people might think that I'm a little bit weird, but I do have solar light bulbs, okay? And I set these out in the sun every day, and then I just hang them on hooks in my, in my spaces, I guess you could say, in my living room. They hang on this hook right here, and then I'll just go, and if I need light, I'll turn on that light instead of flicking the switch. These cost about, I believe, $7 at Amazon, and I've had mine for about a year or two, and they have not let me down yet. So if you get the opportunity, go ahead and purchase yourself a solar bulb. Another thing I did want to touch on was solar, or not solar, I'm sorry, heated blankets. So I have my heated blanket from Biddeford and I've had it for five years. I do not recommend anything Sunbeam. Sunbeam lasts about three months and then it goes kaput. But the Biddeford is different because it goes on the bottom of your sheets instead of on top of your body. So I turn it on for about an hour before bed. And then when I get, get in, it's super, super hot. And that radiant heat lifts upward and then it stops at my body and it helps keep my body super warm. So um, if you can, try and regulate your body instead of regulating your entire house temperature to keep yourself warm. So this is gonna sound like a little bit of a ridiculous tip. If you take a bath, yes, I know the bathtub is dirty, but if you take a bath and it's a hot bath, okay, don't drain the water right away. Let it set in the bathtub and that hot water is going to steam out and heat up a portion of your house just from the hot water that you leave in the bathtub. All right, folks, so I hope that this year's information on how to save hundreds on electricity has been helpful. PG&E, or Pacific Gas and Electric, as you know, with the wildfires, have greatly increased their cost of their bankruptcy onto their customers, and our bills have skyrocketed. But I've shown my bills in the past, and typically they ranged around $30. Now they range around $50. But it's still an extremely, extremely low bill for the size of my house and the location that I live. Another thing that I would highly recommend if you have a fireplace is to utilize free wood that you can find on Craigslist and use your fireplace to heat your home as much as possible. Just be sure to be careful. Make sure that you have your chimney uh, cleaned on a regular basis. And if you have a wood burning stove or wood burning fireplace, all the more better. I hope that this information has been helpful. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out. Hey folks, Prepper Prince. What did you do, mister? What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? You want some milk? Yeah, you're gonna need it to wash that powder off your face. 
Let me see that face. What is this? Look at me. Look at me. Rocky. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> you weird dog. Oh my goodness.